I don't care what anyone says, Sevilla, Spain is easily one of the most underrated cities in the entire world. I studied abroad here back in 2018 for four months and I really didn't know really what the city had to offer. I had no expectations going in and within just a few days I had completely fallen in love with it and I'm not really even a city person. So in this video I'm gonna take you around to some of my favorite spots in the entire city that I genuinely hope each and every one of you gets to experience someday. So without further ado, bienvenidos a Sevilla. Welcome to La Catedral de Santa Maria de la Sede, better known as the Sevilla Cathedral. Named a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1987, this church is the largest Gothic cathedral in the world. So construction of the cathedral began in 1434 and it was completed in 1517. So this place is extremely old, extremely historic, and holds a very, very important place in the Sevillano culture. So La Giralda is 342 feet high, so you can come up here and you literally see 360 degree views of the city, including the gardens down below and the rest of the cathedral. So it's really cool to come up here and see everything. Another really interesting part about this cathedral is that apparently Christopher Columbus's tomb is right here, which is kind of crazy, kind of controversial. Some people don't believe it, but apparently he's here. So we're out in the orange grove, which is kind of where you exit the cathedral, and that was really nice. It's my second time going, Ansley's first, and it's amazing. It's super old, super historic. It's just very, very touristy. Like, at least 50 tourist groups inside right now. And it was kind of like that in the Sagrada Familia, but it was a lot more subtle, I guess. Yeah, it was like calm. Right here, here it's, it's quite loud. I just think they should let in less people at a time. They do timed entries, yeah. and if they just let in less people in each timed entry, it would probably be a little bit better. But. Yeah, it was a bit overwhelming, but I mean, it was it was gorgeous. Yeah, wait till we go to the Alcazar, because that... I'm so excited! It's also touristy, but it's, it's just so much better, and I'm so excited for that. But now we're gonna go walk around the Barrio Santa Cruz, because that's another really historic, beautiful part of Sevilla. So, let's go. So Barrio Santa Cruz is a must. It's really beautiful. Lots of skinny side streets, great tapas, great shops. And it was actually the old Jewish quarter during the medieval times here in Sevilla. So it's very historic, super old. We're actually in this courtyard right now and there's a lot of really cool ruined buildings all around. So definitely come check out this place. It's right by the center of town. It's like a five minute walk from the cathedral. So in Sevilla, breakfast is not the main event because everyone's same room for tapas. Tapas is like the most integral part of the Sevillano culture. It is throughout Spain, but I swear here in Sevilla, it's like on another level. You kind of like walk through the streets. Everyone is out sitting, eating. It's amazing. So it is about one o'clock now, and that's kind of when the tapas festivities begin. So we're gonna go meet up with some friends and get a bunch of amazing goodies. So Woo. let's go. A super popular tapas place for locals is Reyes de Antonio Romero which is super close to the city center. This restaurant is famous for inventing the Montarito Peripi that is now served widely throughout Spain. And it's basically a small sandwich with bacon, tomato, and mayonnaise. We also had some chocos, which is basically fat calamari, and adobo, which is fish fried in a vinegar marinade. Another awesome spot is El Librero Tapas, which is located on a little side street in the Barrio Santa Cruz neighborhood. The interior is beautiful, the service is really, really great, and they serve super authentic Sevillano tapas. So, espinacas con garbanzos, which is spinach with chickpeas. It's like warm, has like garlic flavor. It's one of my favorite tapas. She saw it on the menu, like actually screamed. I literally in the screamed and scared Ansley like, because I was so excited. <laughs> Isn't that so good? Yum. Looks like throw up. But it's and it looks so like good. throw up. But I also love chickpeas. Do not be fooled by this. It's, it's really good. We also got Andalusian pisto, which is kind of like a Spanish twist on ratatouille, and then these like marinated peppers and onions. So these are all very traditional, and they're so good. And then of course, we had to experience El Rinconcillo, the oldest tapas bar in Sevilla. It opened in 1670 and let me tell you, it is totally worth the hype. It has a super vibrant atmosphere and makes you feel like you've stepped back in time. We got four glasses of wine, bread, two tapas, and one main dish for just 26 euros. 
Make sure you eat at the bar or one of the high tops if you want to order tapas because the dining room is main dishes only. El Real Alcazar de Sevilla is a thousand-year-old royal palace located in the heart of the city. Also registered as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, it was originally built as a Moorish fort in the 10th century, but construction of the primary Alcazar that we see today began in the 1400s after the Christians took over Sevilla. So we're currently in the Maiden's Courtyard, which literally feels like it's straight out of a movie. So if you're a Game of Thrones fan like me, the um, House of Dorne was filmed here, which is pretty sick. But yeah, this is an incredible part of the Alcazar. The detail on the walls, the ceiling, it's mind-blowing. I honestly don't know how these people did this. It took so much time. I was listening to one of the tour guides. Just this type of wall, they would bake it in the oven. They would have to do one long sheet for the entire room. And they would have to account for all the windows, the doorways. It's wild. And then you have all of this right here. It's like perfectly carved and it's a lot of them is wood. It's crazy to see up close. So you'll definitely want to leave yourself some time to explore the gardens because they're huge. They just keep going and going. This was also a place where Game of Thrones was filmed, which is super cool. I recognize it immediately with the really tall palm trees and all of the foliage. It's really beautiful. So definitely leave yourself some time to explore this area as well and just kind of like sit and soak it all in. Crosby's sister. I am currently at Plaza de España solo at the moment because Crosby had a last minute call she had to join, sadly. So I am exploring the beautiful plaza by myself right now and it is wonderful weather and it is absolutely gorgeous here. The Plaza de España was built in 1928 for the Ibero-American Exposition of 1929, and it's easily one of the most beautiful parts of Sevilla. There's a moat winding through the square that you can actually canoe through if you'd like, and there are four bridges that you'll cross over to access the various beautiful buildings in the plaza. It's open 24-7 and it's free to the public, and there's just beautiful gardens that you can lay out in, always a bunch of live music that I watched for like hours just now, and it's just an amazing place you can spend the whole day there if you'd like. If you're looking for some green space to hang out in Sevilla, Parque Maria Luisa is the obvious choice. It's right next to the Plaza de España and is such a beautiful park with tons of trees, ponds, and greenery to relax and enjoy the nature. I'm gonna be honest with you, Sevilla does have so many incredible UNESCO heritage sites, plazas you can explore, all of those places are so incredible, but I have found that the real magic of Sevilla isn't just one place or thing. It's the overall energy of the city that you will feel in the tiny taverns, the little side streets, the neighborhoods. So really quickly, I am going to share with you my favorite areas in town for you to enjoy at Tinta de Verano, have a good conversation, and just enjoy the good vibes all around you. So here are a few of my favorite spots to do that. Woo! First up, we have La Alameda de Hercules, one of my all-time favorite parts of Sevilla. I lived about five minutes from here when I was studying abroad, and I was here almost every single day eating tapas, having drinks with friends, or just hanging out outside. Whether you want to grab a bite to eat or go to a club, Alameda has it all. Another fun area not too far from Alameda is Las Setas, which means mushrooms in Spanish. You can't miss it. It's about 85 feet high and holds the title of the largest wooden structure in the world. You can pay a small fee to go to the top of Las Setas for a nice view, but I prefer to bounce around to the mini tapas spots in the square and do some awesome people watching as well. And finally, we have Triana, a beautiful neighborhood right across the Guadalivir River, known for its ceramics, lively atmosphere, and the Triana Market. It's right across the Puente de Isabel Bridge, which is also an amazing spot for sunset. Definitely spend an afternoon or evening over here if you have some time. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this mini trip through Sevilla. It was really such a surreal experience to go back and it really hasn't changed at all in the four years that I've been gone, which is incredible. But if you are planning on going to Sevilla and you have any questions at all, please comment them below. I could talk about Sevilla all day. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to show your support by liking this video and subscribing. And I really, really appreciate it and I appreciate each and every one of you so freaking much. So as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.